Hi everyone! Today I wanted to show my crystal collection. I have various different crystals, so I wanted to talk about what they are, what they can be used for, how I use them. A lot of people think that crystals and other spiritual tools are gimmicks, but hear me out. If you think about it, saying there is a god that lives in our sky seems outlandish, and saying that when we pass away there is an afterlife can be so extreme at times. But many of us still have beliefs because it gives us a sense of purpose or guidance in life or eases our anxieties and gives us reason for things we can't explain. But it all depends on the person. Some people feel happier believing in nothing. Some people feel happier believing in religions, spiritualities, or magic. Maybe you don't vibe with crystals. Maybe it don't do anything for you. But for other people, it might make them feel empowered, protected, guided, or helped out in some way. No, there really is no proof on a scientific level for whether or not crystals work, gods exist, or if magic is real. But if you believe gods exist, crystals can help you, and magic can work, and if it makes you feel better and you're not hurting anybody, then why not try it out? And if it does work for you and you do sense these spiritual, religious, or magical things people have been talking about, then why not explore more? It's okay to be skeptical, but just remember that it's important to be respectful to others. Maybe magic isn't real to you, but for others, it's just as real as their love for it. So now with that out of the way, getting into it, I use Moonstone for feeling more connected to my gods and for protection. I know of a few people who carry Moonstone on them if they drive at night or if they go walking at night. Moonstone is like an angel you carry around in your pocket to help protect you and keep you in the minds of gods. Moonstone actually is probably my most powerful stone I have, in my opinion, and it can be great to use if you want to think more clearly and make better choices. It's a very divine stone. I actually wouldn't mind getting it in the shape of an angel. But speaking of angels, I think they exist, but I haven't had much interaction with them, I think. However, I do have rose quartz. One of the stones I have is in the shape of an angel. Rose quartz can be used for attracting love, developing self-love, or for becoming more at peace and for healing. I don't really vibe much with rose quartz, but when it is in the shape of an angel, the power feels stronger and it's like an actual little angel is on my side to help me find peace. The regular crystal I have, though, I sometimes use for my chronic pains. So the angel will go in my pocket and the other crystal will be placed on where I feel pain, which is usually in my shoulders. Is there any proof that rose quartz could really cure your pain? Not really. But does it help me? Kind of. A lot of the time, pain medicine isn't strong enough for me, so I'll just have to resort to rose quartz. I also have aventurine and amazonite in the forms of angels. Aventurine can help you attract better leadership skills and prosperity, which may be why it's green. Amazonite, however, is what I use to protect myself from negative emotions, plus I also use it to find peace, understanding, and new ways to speak my truth. Communication can be hard, but Amazonite can help grow that skill, so you could communicate way better and express yourself. I would like some more Amazonite in the shape of a horse and also maybe adventuring in the shape of a snake. Next up is Amethyst. I don't really use it that much, but it can be great for calming down, easing anxieties, and for getting rest. I would love to have this in the form of an angel. But I adore aquamarine for manifesting. I know amethyst and several other crystals can be used for manifesting, but for me, aquamarine is the one crystal that I could really just feel the manifestation energy from. Aquamarine for me is a great way to help attract what I want and gain the motivation to bring what I want my way. By the way, just because you use a crystal to manifest something doesn't mean anything if you put in no work. You attract the energy you want with the crystals you use. But if you don't use the energy to put in the work to actually get what you want, then nothing will happen. Think of crystals as a boost for attracting what you want. So instead of working by yourself, you now have these spiritual tools that can support you in mysterious ways. They don't work if you don't put the work in too. But lastly is clear quartz. I use this for cleansing, purification, balancing my life, and for amplifying the power of other crystals. I have clear quartz in the shape of the female form. I believe feminine energy can be great for attracting what you want, and it could be very empowering. I just love to use the feminine form as a way to, I guess, like show my appreciation for my female goddesses, but I have seen people use the female form as a way to embrace self-love and maybe attract a partner. The feminine form could also be used to attract fertility as well if you are into that, but I would like clear quartz in the shape of an angel. 
I used to use Tiger's Eye, but I quit because I don't like the vibe they gave. Which, speaking of that, I pick what crystals to have based on the energy I feel from them. If the energy is good, I use it. However, with Tiger's Eye, I purchased it online, so I just had to hope that when I got it, I would like it. Which I've done before with several other crystals. But with Tiger's Eye, although it was made to help me feel better, it made me feel worse because I just wasn't compatible with the stone. But if this happens, there is other crystals that can help you with what you want. Some crystals have the same energy as other crystals, in my opinion. But the color and shape of the crystals can affect how you feel their energy, since different shapes and colors represent different things. But now let's get into some crystals I would love to add to my collection, and why, before we move into the next part of the video. Onyx, in the shape of an angel. I want onyx because onyx can absorb excessive desires, improve self-control, and calm worries. Obsidian because it can help you release anger and resentment, and is protection against the negative energies. I would like obsidian in the shape of a cat or a deer. To me, deer are very sacred, and cats are some of the best companions, but I might also want obsidian in the shape of an angel. I also would love howlite because howlite can help you ease rage, connect you to a higher truth, and reduce your stresses. I would love this in the shape of a goat because goats are very ancient creatures that are quite common to see in witchcraft or in polytheism. I chose these crystals because I believe they would work best for me, and I feel like I am the most compatible with them. Now, I have been told before that some of the crystals I have are actually not compatible with other crystals I own, because some crystals can throw off the energies of other crystals. However, I don't really believe in that, because I feel like it just isn't, from my experience, very common of an occurrence. However, I did feel like that for Tiger's Eye, it threw off my energy as well as my other crystals' energies. Like, for some reason, I'm not compatible with Tiger's Eye, and neither are my other stones. That may sound outlandish to you, but I swear if you felt the way I felt, you would have understood it. But now that I said what these crystals can be used for, how do I actually use them? If I want to feel a certain energy, for example, like protection, I would carry Moonstone in my pocket. If I want to sleep better, I'd pick a crystal that helps me feel more at ease and put it under my pillow. If I want to attract an energy, I could just hold the crystal in my hand and say mantras to sort of summon the power of the crystal. Like if I want to feel healing, I can hold rose quartz in my hand and manifest that power into awakening it by saying, I feel healed. But you do not need crystals, though, to manifest. There are times before where I repeat it to myself, I see eagles, because I love birds, but sometimes birds of prey are very hard to find. But then later that day, I actually did summon eagles, because... I kept repeating, I see eagles, and then a while later, there was actually eagles flying around near me, and I was like, whoa. And I got amazing footage of them too, which I included in one of my vlogs. You can call it a coincidence, but at this point, it is now a pattern. But by using crystals, you can use them to make your manifestation stronger. So I have seen people before hold aquamarine or other crystals in their hands and repeat things like, I have a house, I have a pet cat, I have a child. They repeat what they want in their life. Maybe they sometimes mention a god they believe in to help get what they want, while also putting in the effort outside of these practices. By manifesting, you are essentially faking it until you make it. You are manifesting things you want into reality. And it's also probably one of the most, I would say, easiest practices to really get into because you just need to find a crystal that you feel good with, hold it in your hand pretty much, activate it, and then manifest what you want the activated crystal to help you attract, and then hopefully get what you want. Whether it be a child, healing, self-love, a cat, a house, but outside of all of this, put in the work to help these things actually become a reality. Crystals just give you that extra boost. I really hope I make all that very clear. But you could also use crystal grids, altars, or even rituals. But sometimes just repeating what you want shows the spiritual energy that you mean it. So that's why I mentioned repeating words while holding the crystal, so that way you're able to fake it until you make it, pretty much. But you could also use bowls or glasses with labels to help always have the crystals in use. Put a note on the bowl with your manifestation and put the crystals in the bowl that help with that. I don't really do this much anymore because, like I said, I think crystals only are activated if you are using them. Maybe it don't work for me, but for other people it might. For example, I've seen people put crystals in a bowl and put a note on the crystals in the bowl that has what they want. For example, weight loss, gaining followers, becoming wealthier, 
getting children or for healing, you know? There's also people who place their crystals in plants they grow, so as the plant grows, so does the possibility of what they want to manifest. You can also practice witchcraft with your crystals to cast spells. One good book for manifestation spells is this manifestation witchcraft book. I love it a lot, and it's probably the best book I've ever read on the topic. It's exactly what is needed if you want some tips on how to use magic to get what you want. But sometimes you have to cleanse your crystals by saging them, letting them soak in the moonlight, or letting them rest on clear quartz. There's various ways of cleansing crystals, but basically this is how I use mine. This video was a giant summary, and I hope this maybe inspired you to get started with crystals or maybe get more ideas on how to use the crystals you already have. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!